Hey, how you doing? This is Tony. Welcome to Finding Subjects Podcast. What's going on? Hopefully everything's going well. Got up this morning and I said, you know, I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I'm going to sit there and I'm going to really take advantage of my life goals and everything that I want to achieve. And then I sat there and I said to myself, what exactly are those? How <laughs> I could tell you a whole bunch of things that would pop in the mind, but the only way I really find out the truth is I sit here with a with my little notebook here and a pen and I start asking myself questions, uh, checking myself and something interesting popped into my nog. It was the question, well, how long do I got left? Like most people, I think, don't really ask themselves that question unless a, maybe a health adversity kicks in. But I'm sitting here this morning thinking, OK, <clears throat> excuse me. How, how much time do I have here? I mean, we don't know, right, how long we have left to live. But I, I know of a woman, and uh, she used to belong to our church a long time ago. She's probably still there, but I'm not there any longer. And uh, she was an actuary. And an actuary is somebody who figures out someone's life expectancy. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they come up with these uh, actuary life tables, right? So if you Google them online... You, know, you could find some information about it. Now, it doesn't mean deadly because, uh, I, I mean, it does to an extent, but every single person is individual due to their health situations, modern medicine and such. Uh, but I was just playing the game of numbers with myself. And I don't want you guys getting all caught up in this because this is just about me today. I don't want you to start obsessing with it or whatever. And if, if you do have triggers about this, then shut this off. And uh, check out our next episode or one of our past episodes. And I'll wait a second until you go do that. And, uh, you know, because this could be, I don't want to say disturbing to you, but to me, it's the reality. It's its awakening, right? So I'm doing, uh, all right, we're going to talk about it again, folks, in case you are still here and you want to leave. Just shut it off and go. All right, if you're sticking around and you're braving it, here we go. Uh, my father passed away at 72, all right? Um I just got to level 60 not long ago. And uh, I was thinking, I mean, okay, Tone, you have these dreams, right? Dreams and aspirations. I'm drawing on, the, on my piece of paper, little square. Write your dreams into fruition, right? We talk about that. Write your dreams on little paste notes so you can stick them all around, all over the place and motivate yourself. All right. So staying realistically, okay, what do I want to achieve? Well, we've talked about uh, this and that with me, but let's forget about that. All right. Let's just forget about the, the specifics of my life. We have this empty square box and that's up to you to write your, it's about you today to write your dreams and what you want to achieve in your life. Okay. So write your dreams in there and then we will take my age per se. Now, according to some of the life actuary charts, the actuary life table, excuse me, um, you know, you can find different numbers for the average life of an American uh, white male. And it will come up to maybe like anywhere I've come up with numbers from 74 to 77, 76. So then, okay, 76. It's called 76 years old, right? But there's another chart that I found that it says my current age and then the probabilities of me living even past that. So, if I entered my current age and I lived to 81, because they said, you know, you have a, a 0.015702% of dying now, but we think you're going to live to maybe another 19 years. Now, they don't know who diddly squat about my personal health history or anything like that. But let's just play mathematics a little bit. Let's just say, okay, I got till 81 to live. All right. Certainly with modern medicine, going to the doctors all and all that, uh, preventive medicine, maybe it ups my chances a bit. But now let's break it down and let's do the math. So if I got 81, right, to get to level 81 plus one, right, level 80 plus one, that gives me 19.03 more years to live, which equates to 989.56 weeks left to live which also equates to 6,945.95 days of life left. Now, that's kind of crazy. That's 19 Christmases, 
19 Fourth of Julys, 19 Memorial Days. If I see my kids, say, twice a month with 19 years left, that's 288. Let me see that. Do I have that correct? Let's do that math again because it doesn't look right to me. Yeah, okay. If I got 19 years left, come on. Come on, Anthony. I can't even work a calculator anymore. Remember these calculators? If you had one, you were rich. Here we go. <clears throat> but 19 years left times uh, 12. That's 228 months. And let's divide that. What would you times that by two? Yeah, times it by two. Yeah, okay, here we go. So if I got 19 years left and I see my kids two times a month, right, for 228 months, that means I got 456 more times to hang out with my kids. 456. But let's just say I don't live to 81. Let's say I live to 74. That means I got roughly, you know, 10 to 12 years left to live. <clears throat> 624 weeks, 4,380 days, 105,120 hours left. If I saw my kids each uh, month twice, it's roughly 288 more times I got left with my kids. 12 Christmases, 12 Fourth of Julys. 12 Memorial Days. That's not something I'm making up. It's a hypoth it is hypothetical. But I was having this conversation with my daughter this morning in regards to uh, a gentleman came on television and he's now like the oldest male in the world. He's 100 and well, he was born in uh, 1911 or 1912. They're not certain. Certain. But I said to my daughter, imagine what this guy could tell you when he was about what he was 15 or 20 years old, or even 25 or 30. I mean, back to the calculator. He's born in 1911. And when he is uh, 25 years old, it's 1936. Do you know what was happening in Europe in 1936? Let's just say when he was 30 years old, you know? I know you already did the math. Right? <laughs> 1911 plus 30 is easy, ain't he? It? It's 1941, the heart of World War II. And he's 30. I can remember a lot of things when I was 30. But imagine what this man could tell us, could tell his grandchildren or his family, if he even has. I don't even know, you know if he has family members. Did he think that he'd still be here in 2024? That is incredible. Where I'm going with this, as I said to my daughter, it is, it's amazing the transition that happens. And she looked at me and she said, I don't really like to talk about that stuff. I said, I know. I said, I know, I know what you're talking about. I said, but isn't that amazing? The transition. And we stopped the conversation there, but I continue it now with you. The transition that I'm talking about is probably, and obviously most of the people that he grew up with aren't here anymore. Most of the people that were on the planet Earth in 1911, when he was born, went through the transition. Population has morphed into who they are today. You got me? You, you see what I'm saying about this transition? It's a population transition into the future where one by one, it changes by each individual passing away and being born. And it's this transition, this morphing uh, of, of human, human, human beings, humanity is the word I was searching for, to take us to where we are today. And, and, and in front of you, what you can't see, I have my hands open like a, a foot wide between them. And I'm kind of like going from my left and holding them from an equal length to the right. And this transition happens through time. 
And how I see time is this chart in front of me from the day of my birth until today. And then I continue that to the day of my death, which is unknown. And then everybody else's timelines, if you drew them all on a piece of paper from the top to the bottom, you will see how they, it stretches out. Whoa, knock that thermos over. It stretches out pretty wide, but it's always thick and it always moves like that. How I had my hands separate, all these people moving together or humanity moving together, but all these individuals joining and dropping throughout his history and throughout time. I like to expand my mind that way and think about that most of the time. That's how um, the things I think about. Um, I, it, it could be weird to you, but it, to me, it's the whole picture. It's the, I'm amazed by that type of stuff, that an entire civilization of the world in 1911 is no longer here, but maybe one person. Freaks me out. But in a good way, because I'm going somewhere positive with this. Um, and again, you know, you're, you're going to say, oh, no, no, it's our problem again. Okay, let's just talk about a health adversity. It wakes you up a bit. You start thinking like this a little bit. Like because you were, your clock and you realize it is finite. And you're a little bit more hypersensitive than most people are in regards to it. You're like, okay, man, I got this. I'm dealing with this. Well, I remember my cardiologist, one of my cardiologists in the beginning, they're like, you know what? <clears throat> no one, <coughs> excuse, me. excuse me, no one can promise you anything, Tone, but <clears throat> there's a very good likelihood you're going to be here a lot longer than a lot of people that you know right now that don't have anything wrong with them. Because you look at it this way, you're going to be seeing a cardiologist every three months <clears throat> excuse me, you're going to have all these tests run, blood work done and all this type of stuff. And they're going to be really on top of your health. But somebody is out there that's just not taking care of themselves. That's not doing all they can to better themselves and to prolong their life. And you're going to see people that you know and love, they're going to pass, pass away. And he goes, I can't say how long you're going to be here. Because I was asking, I mean, you know, just what's the progression of what I got? How long I got? How long do I have? It's like there's people that live a perfectly long, long life with this. You don't know where you're going to fall. It's up to you, Tom. You could be how you've always been and not listen to any doctors and go ahead and try to start lifting weights again or doing whatever you used to do. Go out and play some hockey games and you are increasing your uh, <laughs> your risk for <laughs> fatal encounters. You could take care of yourself and listen to everything that we say and do everything you can to stretch it out. Stretch out. Your long game. Because isn't that what we all want? We all want the long game. We're all shooting for that. To be around longer than anybody else that we know, for the most part. And so looking at these numbers, it's an eye-opener, right? Like if I was to take uh, this pen and on another piece of paper write out 600, and make little squares on each line, right? And then put a little... Square, 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 square. It's 10 squares. If I did that, you know, all the way across. So let's say I got 100 squares on one line. I got six lines and then a couple squares on the bottom. 24 more squares. Maybe in the next two, maybe I, maybe I get to four lines down and I can do that. And then each week that we live... <laughs> Put an X through it. Because that's you're not getting that back. That's that's called life lived. Anything with an X indicates life lived. Life lived. Circle around that. A little star at the top, a star on the bottom. Star to the left, star to the right, just because I have to. It's an OCD thing. Life lived. Okay, and you're looking at, okay, cool. I got a lot of open boxes across the line. I got time to do that. I got time to eat better tomorrow. I got time to, you know, write that song I was wanting to do. You know, I also read something the other day. If you took 19 minutes a day doing whatever it is that you like to do, but you practiced at it or just utilized it or exercised it 
or performed it 19 minutes a day in one year, you will be better at that certain thing than 95% of the world's population. Think about that. I often think about if I played the guitar for the last 30 days, every day, 30 years, excuse me, 30 years for every day for half an hour, how good I'd be. Why don't we do that? Why do we procrastinate for some things that, you know, if you could do it today and just pick it up and, you know, yeah, I'd be so much better. Why do we procrastinate? I think sometimes it's because we have an endless hourglass in front of our eyes, in our minds somehow. And it's always halfway full at the top. It's always there. But in reality, it, it changes, right? The granulars, granulars fall through the hourglass and they land on the bottom. I'm having a heck of a time with this microphone. And time passes through. So uh, in regards to waking up this morning and thinking about what I'm going to achieve today, um, time and that little statistics from yesterday really stuck into my head. I said, dude, we don't know how long, right? But let's just say, and I'll go with the lower number, what just, let's just say I patterned my father. And he was, he lived to 72 and I got, you know, 10 years left, 12 years left, whatever that is. It's not a whole lot of time. I mean, it makes me sad to think of, nine, you know, 12 years left, 12 Christmases, 12 Fourth of Julys, 12 New Years, 12 more New Years at Karen and Bob's <laughs> with their cool nephew. Tony, Tony, Tony. Every time I walk through the door, hey, don't it, hey, ooh, ah, ooh, ooh. <laughs> he goes into this like Vinnie Boom Bots, uh, <laughs> you know, mob type of, yo, hey. And it's hilarious. And he's been doing it for the past 10 years, 15 years. Great kid. 12 years of that left? I don't know about you. It's, it's kind of scary. Now, 12 years is a long time. And again, we're not, this is not a finite thing. Let's stretch it, Tone. Tone. Go forward in time. I'm now 74. And I'm thinking about this day. I'm talking to you folks right now. What would I say? What would I say to myself? Make myself 75. Who, what do I look like? What kind of shape am I in? What's my financial situation? What's my family situation? How long ago did we drop the podcast? Or is it still going? <laughs> still going and not making... It... Yo, it's still going, right? <laughs> it's cost me thousands of dollars. <laughs> and I'm down to five listeners. Thank you, five, whoever you are. <laughs> but you look back. Okay, I'm 70... Say 75. Say I'm 75. Let's play this game. I'm 75 and I'm looking back to this day right now. Dude, you should have, man, Tone, you know, you don't look bad, but you couldn't stand to lose a few pounds. Hey, who? Oh, we all could, right? But Tony, if you, if you, if you really took the time to cut that sugar out of your diet, if you took the time to just, you know, take just a little walk here and there, if you took the time to just de-stress yourself every once in a while, just like meditate it out, man. Hit it with a um or whatever it took to, to chill yourself. Brother, you wouldn't be in the health that you are in right now. You'd be looking good for shooting for 80, maybe 85. Maybe seeing great grandkids if, you know, if, if God chooses. Tony, you should have told the people that you love them, all of them, everybody who you cared about, who you loved. And this, this Tony will say, but I'm already doing that right now. I'm knocking that out. Yes, you were. And you are. Good job, Tony. Old Tony said to, to, to me, me, Tony, right now. Good job, dude. No regrets. You're taking vacations. You're being cool to people. You're, you're living life the best you can. You're not being cruel. 
You're not being disrespectful to people. And you're waking up every day, giving thanks to God, and you're appreciating for everything you, you, you have and you always have been. Good job, dude. And I'd say, thank you, old Tony. But, but old Tony would say back to me, dude, but don't forget, man. Really watch your diet. Really watch some of that unhealthy food that you're putting in your body. Make better choices. It'll help you in the end run, man. Good job not smoking. No good job with the no no drugs. Good job keeping up with your faith. Good job being a good dad and a good husband and a good friend. But keep the journey direct to now. Keep doing what you're doing, but even do it a little bit better each and every day. And I would say, thank you, old Tony. <laughs> thank you, old Tony Juan Canoni. Tony Juan Canoli. <laughs> oh, man. You know, it's good to think sometimes. It's good to think of the what ifs. It's good to think a little bit down the line while simultaneously living in today, right? It's good to plan for the future. I think it's you know, kind of... Uh, you know, harmful sometimes if you're always living in the past. There's nothing we can do about that. That's that little box that got X'd out, right? There it is. I'm coloring it in now because I can't not. And how many boxes you got left to check off? Mr. Checkoff, scratch out another box. You know what I'm saying? So there it is. Life in mathematics. An actuary life table that we kind of like dissected a bit. If you're a young person, you got a long way to live. Start saving your money. But also, take your vacations. Live your life. And if you're looking for somebody, you know, I, I like that, that quote from Perks of Being a Wallflower. We accept the love we think we deserve. Think about that. We accept the love that we think we deserve. I was out the other night uh, with Bink and his wife. And we talked about the podcast a little bit, but we just talked about life, man. And it was just a really nice time just to be able to uh, reflect. And we are very like-minded, Bink and I. And so are our wives. It was very cool. It's really cool. Everybody hit it off great. It was it was a it was a really nice time. Got some ice cream afterwards. Just chilled. But uh, they're very grateful people. And, and Bink is a very um, a very mindful person. Uh, he appreciates everything he has, and so does his wife, as does my wife and myself. But it was cool to be around people that are that they they understand what they have. They understand that they're blessed and they often give thanks for, for being blessed. But it, it just all of that, um, that's something that we talked about doing for a long time. We haven't and we finally did it, right? Just got together and, and had a great steak uh, at a local restaurant. It was cool. We had a great time. But you have to do that more often. You got to make plans with people. You got to just make it happen. You can't just say, yeah, we should get together sometime. Make it happen. You want to go on a vacation somewhere? Plan for it. Make it happen. Schedule it. And it always comes down to money. You can say, Tom, I don't have the money to take the vacation that you take. First of all, I'm I'm not a wealthy man, right? In in, in non-material things, I'm I'm a millionaire, a billionaire. Uh, but when it comes to you know currency, no. But we plan and save. We plan, well, how can we get there? Or how can we do that? Just because we go on vacation doesn't mean you're gonna eat dinner at a at a fancy restaurant every night. There's ways to plan things and do things on the uh, less expensive way. So when there's a will, there's, there's a way. But let's break it down to even more simple things. Ah, I want to lose some weight or ah, I really want to play the guitar or I want to learn how to sing. We are now blessed, if you want to use the word blessed, in a, in a time frame where there are all these instructional videos on Google and YouTube and stuff like that, that you can sit down there and what used to cost a ton of money for guitar lessons or singing lessons or how to write a book, anything that you would possibly want to achieve, 
There is instructions out there, and a lot of it's for free. So there's no excuse in that way. And I would say, you know, you always pick minds, right? So if you find one, watch the one video, and then watch another one, then watch another one. And if there's things that are overlapping, then hey, they're all, all three said the same thing. I'll definitely do that. And it's trial and error at that point. So where are we going with this? We have finite time left. What are you going to do with it? That's the question for today. What are you going to do with the rest of your life? How much time do you got left? And what are you going to do with it? And listen, you might be at the point where you're like, I don't want to do nothing. I'm happy where I am. I just want to chill out and appreciate everything I have. And I would say, touche, man. Congratulations for you because you're at a good point. But if you've got things you want to do and they're good things, just a little reminder. Tomorrow, tomorrow is not always promised. It's not a given. It's a gift. Something to think about today. Going deep. Actuary life tables. Actuary charts. Did you know that the salary of an actuary, that's the person that calculates this stuff. If you go on Indeed, they say anywhere from $76,000 to $200,000. Zip Recruiter says about $120,000 to $140,000. It's kind of interesting, but this woman at our church, she did that for a living. She was an actuary, and I thought that was cool. And it was cool enough that the pastor one day actually brought it up. He says, do you know she's an actuary? And her, he goes, anybody know what, the, what that is? A lot of people didn't. Very very few did, actually. And uh, a couple of people raised their hands. Like, yeah, you know, she guesses how long you're going to live. <laughs> but no one knows that day. Only God uh, does know the time and the day and the hour but uh i'm trying to make you aware okay i'm trying to wake you up a little bit and uh you know not put life off till tomorrow you know i mean i've been binging suits probably the past two months three months i'm in episode nine i mean season nine episode ten um you know Meghan Markle is gone. She has it. Maybe she goes back for episode 10. I don't know. She went to Seattle with Mike to run a nonprofit, to be a lawyer for nonprofits. <laughs> I get a kick out of that show. I don't know. It's good. Uh, you know, Donna, beautiful, beautiful woman, Donna. It's a great show, man. It's great acting, I think. And uh, it's kind of cool. But those people whew, talk about burning the candle at both ends, you know, 20 hour work days. You know, back to back to back. Yeah, you're making big bucks, man. But uh, what are you missing out of that? Kids growing up. Balance, folks, is the key, I believe. And that is one of the things that that old gentleman who's 111 said when they ask, what's the secret to your long life? And he said to them, balance. Balance in everything. And he eats fish and chips once a week. So there you go. <laughs> Balance everything. I need some fish and chips every week. For Finding Subjects, I'm Tony. I, I think it's cool to have some, uh, it's called introspective, to look within your lives and to analyze yourself and to uh, you know think about what you currently have, how much time we waste wishing for things that we don't have, how much time we waste being angry, how much time we waste being hateful, resentful of others, possibly family members. Um, I I, I truly believe life is too short to hold hold and harbor those types of feelings, man. Again, just my two cents. I don't know how you feel about all that, but someone who has been living it, has lived it, you know, bad days, negative days, I'm, I'm in a beautiful place right now to be able to hopefully share this with you and instill this in you that live your life the best you can. Mend old broken fences. Rebuild your old burned bridges if you have to. Uh, make amends, if not for them, for you. And uh, do what you need to do. You know, extend, but always extending kindness and respect towards others. Anything, Anything else is just not worth it. All right. You have a fantastic day. 
Uh, thanks for digging deep in with me and diving deep with me. All right. Hey, remember, uh, you can join us on Facebook, Finding Subjects Podcast, and Instagram as well. So if you like the show, please uh, follow and subscribe. It's free. And tell somebody else if they might like it too. If you're sitting at work right now and you need something to divert your attention, wish your boss is a butt. Yeah, join Finding Subjects. Love to hang out with you. All right, folks, take care. See you. Peace. Thank you.